there, welcome to Mind Boggles. Hope you enjoyed some of our shows in the past. Uh, if you've not seen the show before, we're talking about different ways that the mind thinks and how you can learn how to understand how your mind works. Learn how to relax the mind. Learn that perhaps we have a mind to use, but we're not really our mind. Like we talked about anger here recently. Notice how anger will come in, and if you slow your breathing, it'll disappear, right? Somehow your breath's involved in this anger process. All kinds of interesting ideas. Today we're going to talk about the evolution of consciousness in the human experience. Just to give you a sense of the flow of time, right? So if we go back in time, we're looking at it from a scientific standpoint, not from a religious or cultural standpoint, as much as this, the scientific data we have today. For example, we know that there's at least 300 fairly specific religions today. Each of them have their own idea of creation, how man relates to the world and the universe and the sky and, and God and all those kinds of things. And there's 300 stories about how this whole thing happened. Actually, there's thousands, but we narrow it down to 300 religions. You'll have 300 different stories. Well, today we're not going to talk about those stories. We're going to talk about science. What do we know from science in the past couple hundred years in the evolution of the human experience, right? And we're going to talk about how consciousness also goes through leaps, right? So if we go back in time for a couple million years, we know that there were a number of different types of hominids, which are human kind of critters. They're not what we would call homo sapiens. We're the latest variation in the human experience. But we go back in time, two million years ago, we find there were hand axes. There were types of hominids that had axes with little stones tied to them that they could use as a tool. And they would break rock on one side so that it would be sharp enough to where they could use it to hammer their uh, animals they were chasing or maybe chop trees on, I don't know. Whatever they do with an ax. Well, it took about two million years before the, some hominid out there, probably from uh, New Jersey, said, hey, let's, let's hammer the, um, the rock on the other side to make it even sharper. So now we have a hand axe that's pretty, pretty powerful with a very, very sharp edge. Well, so what? Consciousness takes a long time in the evolutionary scheme of things to make changes. Well, we know that hominids grew through a d different types of evolutions till finally we have, about 170,000 years ago, our particular variation, which we call Homo sapiens. We can track it very carefully, how it evolved out of Africa. We can know the, the patterns. About 10,000 years ago, uh, we have a cultural evolution in consciousness where people started learning how to grow. This was phenomenal. Agriculture, drop seeds in the ground and bam, things would grow. You didn't have to tr hunt, you didn't have to wander all over the place like nomads looking for food. So the first level of consciousness was physical consciousness of our surroundings. The second was our cultural consciousness where now we started to, as human beings, started to live in the same areas as food would grow. And as that happened, you had colonies, families, small little villages. Pretty soon people would divide up the labor. You go hunt, you make pots, whatever. Language developed, right? We started to identify with our group as our uh, identity, our, our cultural consciousness. Uh, this is still quite alive and well today, is it not? We still identify as Floridians or as Americans or Republicans or Democrats. We have a certain group consciousness that we tend to use. Well, that's okay. That can be useful sometimes. Uh, now, in the 21st century, actually started in the halfway through the 20th century, we started spaceflight. When we look back from the moon, and saw the first picture of the Earth rising. Remember that picture? It was profound that you realize that, my gosh, the world really is round? Unbelievable. Anyway, from that point, I would mark that time as when we started realizing we are now a global consciousness. We are now the world. If we louse up the ocean, in the Pacific or the Atlantic, the entire world is affected. The air of the world 
is not just American airspace or Canadian airspace. Um, we have Chernobyl in Russia, you know, that melts down. You have radioactivity goes up in the air. It falls on the wheat fields of Canada. We eat the wheat. We're all connected now. Uh, from space, you look down at the, at the earth. There's no line in the ground that says this is Mexico and this is America or this is Chile and this is Argentina. It's the world. We now have the global community. The internet now is developing kind of, an, of a global brain, if you want to use that, or, or a neurological system. We are getting that global consciousness and going through the pangs of it, right? That's, it hurts. Uh, things that used to work when we were a nation that kind of was self-supporting, now we're interconnected with everybody. And it's very awkward, it's very uncomfortable. You know, China loans us money, and then we give it to people building houses, and how does it all fit together? And it's very confusing. You know, it was easy when they were the enemy. Now we're the good guys, and they're the bad guys. Now we're all interconnected, are we not? Which to me is terrific, because now we're le less likely to shoot each other if we're connected. We're, we're now, everybody's a partner. And now everyone needs to win. We can't afford to have people outside of the economy losing. With that, then we have poverty, we have disease, we have corruption, we have the breeding ground for war. Right? We need to have everybody get in the game and figure out a way so that we can all make a living and stay alive and watch our grandkids grow up. But this global consciousness is still in its infancy. There's a lot of people that still want to go back to the old days, you know, America first, the heck with everybody else, whatever works for us, well, tough. Not going back. <laughs> it's, we've got to go forward. That's the only way it's going. It is a global environment now, whether we like it or not. And a lot of us, it's very comfortable. It's awkward. Things that used to work for us don't work anymore. So the global consciousness is the next shift, and we're just beginning that one. Now, beyond that one is the mind boggler, uh, and that's the cosmic consciousness. And you gotta stretch for this one, but if you've seen pictures that uh, the Hubble you know, takes from space, man, there's a picture that shows the Eagle Nebula looking at, I don't know how many light years of the way, it's a, it's, a, it's a long walk anyway. You look at the Eagle Nebula and you see stars being born. This is the area where stars are being born, right? And you see this, all this space dust out there. When it gets to where there's enough gravitational pull, it gets together and finally from the gravitational pull, it explodes into a star. And our particular star, the sun, is just an average jive star, nothing special about our sun. But now we have so many stars that we can't count them. Like they, they say there's more stars than there are uh, grains of sand on the beach. That's a lot of stars. One of the more recent discoveries is when a star explodes, some of the residue winds up being amino acids, which is the foundation for life itself, right? So if that's valid, and that's what, what I hear it is, then the stars that we see out there, the universe is teeming with life everywhere, right? Not just this one little small speck we call the Earth, but it's everywhere. Different variations, but basically life. So we look at our cosmic interplay in this incredible galaxy in the universe to get a sense of realizing Everything you see here, everything you see in your home, the television, it's, it's all simply stardust. The fundamental <laughs> essence of it, it's stardust. We are part and parcel of the entire experience. We are not human being, being separate from the world. We are part of the world. Right? We're not here to dominate the planet rape and pillage the gland and the trees. We're here to learn how to live with it. Some of the indigenous cultures had this already. The, the American Indians, the, the uh, different cultures around the world that have been living on the same land for thousands and thousands of years. You learn how to live with the land. It's said in the, uh, the American Indians, when you do something, you try to think, 
how will this affect the seventh generation from now? And then you take action. Right? That's being a, a partner with the world, right? So as we go through these four leaps in human consciousness from the physical to the cultural, now we're in the global consciousness. If we can step out of that, even move past that to realize the cosmic consciousness, you look out, look at the picture that's the, the, taken from the Hubble, you look out in space and it's absolutely, a, a, it's a mind boggler. Of course it is, it's mind boggler. You think, man, how can that be? And here we are in this small little planet, small little dot, even smaller than a dot, and we think we know everything. We think we're the center of the universe. Nope, <laughs> we're just part of it. We're part of the flow. We're part of space dust itself. We're part of the consciousness expansion, which is indescribable. So we use the phrase mind boggling once again. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this kind of an overview of the evolution of the human consciousness to give you a sense of time and space. Here we are in the 21st century. We've moved past physical consciousness. We're pretty well, I'm aware of my body and what I can do. Cultural consciousness, this is something we still are in the process of overcoming. We still identify often very tightly with, we're the good guys, whoever those guys are, the bad guys. No, we're just different. And we're learning to, with diversity, to appreciate differences, are we not? So cultural consciousness can be helpful, can be, also can be used as a way to separate us. But then you realize the global consciousness is what we're really working with now, how to be part of the planet. How to realize we have to save not just the ground, the earth, the forest, but the water and the air. We're all in the, like living in a big apartment building now, right? And then cosmic consciousness, that's just a stretch. That's where you look up at the sky and your, your words just disappear like uh, uh, birds with no wings. You can't, they can't fly. Anyway, those four states of consciousness, I hope you enjoyed uh, and get, get a sense of kind of where we are in the universe and uh, hope you enjoyed this and enjoy your day. Uh, my name is Bud Hollowell. I'm doing this little TV show from... Uh, for Mind Boggles, and I hope you enjoyed it. And today, please take care of yourself and see if you can do something good for somebody else today. Until next time, see you later.